Hello and welcome to iScience. I'm Greer Jackson and for this podcast I've been ambling around London, more specifically St Bart's Pathology Museum, for an event dubbed Eat Your Heart Out. Curiously, the function is all about cakes, death and pathology. The aim? To knock the socks off the public with 100% edible art. As I was about to find out, these cakes were not something you'd bring to your grannies for tea, but graphic, gruesome and impressively realistic. I'm here with Carla, co-curator of the museum in which we're standing. Tell me, how do all these themes of edible treats and death and pathology, how, how do they all interrelate? It probably seems like there isn't really much of a link between death and cakes, but that there is actually a link. In the Paleolithic times, we used to cannibalise our dead, and that was how we used to dispose of them as opposed to burying. And then over the years, that gradually became um, the custom of a corpse cake. So there is a link with death and cakes, and there's a link with pathology in cakes because we have different pathological conditions called icing sugar spleen and nutmeg liver and maple syrup urine disease. So when you actually know a little bit about pathology, the link is evidently there. You also have a cocktail inspired by the stomach contents of a suicide victim. Have you had to turn away any ideas for any reason? Not really, because every single idea that we've had here has a justification behind it. The stomach contents cocktail is uh, inspired by one of our own collection. Um, that particular specimen was a barbiturate suicide. Providing there's a link with the cakes and something anatomical or something in the collection, there's really no reason to turn anything away because it's all just human bodies and it's just life. James, you're the famous cocktail maker who made the stomach contents concoction. But can I see one with bacon? So that was uh, Chad Remains. When we'd done a Bloody Mary a few months ago for an event, someone happened to mention how it was like a spag bowl. So and that's where the crispy bacon worked perfectly with what we were doing here. But it's strange how many people are disgusted by it. I didn't quite expect that many people to be put off by some bacon. And what's been the most popular whilst you've been here? Uh, Most popular, definitely the urine sample, which I wouldn't have expected. Um, I think there's something about the other drinks that we've got, so the stool sample's got chunks in it, and kind of people are happy to eat the gruesome cakes, and they're happy to kind of drink the urine, but if it's something that moves when they shake it and isn't a normal consistency, I don't know what it is about people's stomachs, they just don't, can't handle it and go for something safer, so... I'm here with Tasha Mart um, from Animal Vegetable Manoir. Hello, Tasha. Hello. Can you tell us what you've got in store for us today? I've got um, a number of edible curios for Eat Your Heart Out. I've got popping candy placebos, because every medical study needs a placebo to make sure it works. And I've got edible anatomy posters, which are all from 19th century textbooks. And I've got blood samples. And I noticed the blood samples, they've got something in them. Uh, It's kind of blood and veins that make it a bit more gory. Thank you very much, Tasha. (laughs) There must be a dozen stalls here, stacked with all sorts of edible curiosities, from cupcake heart valves to a white chocolate vertebrae, and to this incredibly crafted set of lungs. As a non-pathologist, I might have been mistaken into thinking this was real. They're slightly glistening as though moist from dissection. Of course, being in a pathology museum, I'm surrounded by real-life specimens preserved in formaldehyde too. The walls are shelled with all sorts of unfathomable body parts, Right now, I'm looking at a pelvis, a hand removed a skin to reveal tendons, and a pickled spine. What I find incongruous about the event is that you're eating anatomical-looking cakes whilst gazing at the real thing. It's, it's not something I'd ever thought might have gone hand-in-hand, hand, but admittedly, it's having a real potent effect, at least on me. I'm going to go and ask around and see how people are responding to it. What did you think of today? Well, I don't really know where to start. It's freaky, but it's all really interesting, and the cakes are definitely like a really new way of like looking at things. I think it's really encouraging. Inspired to take part, partake in pathology. I did have a quick look at the careers brochure, actually. So I see you've got a poo and a. This is fat. Fat pounds of fat. <laughs> not all bad then. No, no, definitely not. And, and the poo sample. I've heard it's the least favourite. Well, it looks quite disgusting because there's quite blood in it and stuff. Um, but then the lumps are like, oh no, it's <laughs> disgusting. I'm drinking poo. It just tastes <laughs> like chocolate ice cream. It tastes like one. chocolate ice cream and quite a lot of Baileys, which is nice. <laughs> Maybe I'll pluck up the carriage and yeah, try it. Should. Inspired to take it, partake in pathology? Not pathology, but certainly baking and cocktail making. <laughs> So from overhearing some people here, there's, it's obviously been very powerful to the public and very engaging. Um, what do you hope people will come away with today? 
Well, apart from just the cakes, um, which are incredibly inspiring in themselves anyway, the whole point of the project was that it got a lot of publicity. Um, and over the course of the three days, while people can buy cakes and they can buy these cocktails, they'll also listen to a series of lectures. And today, for example, it's about careers. So what we're really doing is getting people interested in the topics, getting them here, and then actually secretly drip feeding them and educating them without them really realising. <laughs> And lastly, what is your favourite item of today? I think today my favourite has to be the big breast anatomy cake. And it's because we had a woman come in yesterday who had, uh, she'd had breast cancer. And she said, how much is that cake there? Because I'm hopefully due to get my all clear in about two months' time. And when I do, I want to buy that cake. And we said, you know what, love? If you have the all clear, you can have that cake. What a lovely story to end on. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Thanks for listening and join me next time.